Hey, what's up? Anthony with Bleacher Bums Gaming, and going to do a little behind the scenes of high school football, COVID style 2020. Uh, much different season than we have been used to. Uh, obviously, the coach in a mask, but uh, even outside. So, coach at Carl Hayden, uh, it is an inner city school in Phoenix, a second year here. I'd actually retired from coaching. I had been at uh, Westview for the 14 seasons prior and very successful West Side program, uh, run of section titles and uh, playoff appearances, actually played for the state title here twice. Unfortunately, we lost both times that we got there. So very successful program and I spent roughly half of my 30 years coaching there. Um, and the head coach there got a, the opportunity to move into the collegiate ranks. So at that point, uh, the staff kind of dispersed. And I actually, at that uh, stage, was 30 years in and um, just decided to step away and see what normal folks do during the fall because I'd never, ever done it as long as I could remember since I'd always coached or been playing football. So a couple of years away and uh, 20 last year, a player that I actually coached at Westview got the head job here. He's a very uh, up-and-coming young coach and, you know, came here. Great opportunity to a uh, good first head coaching job, opportunity to turn a program around that uh, just has not had much success. In fact, uh, Carl Hayden is uh, 60, I want to make sure I'm right. Yes, yeah, 62 years, school's been around 62 years. In that time in football, has had four winning seasons, one playoff appearance, that's it. And from uh, 2000, oh God, I wanna say 2003 to 2009, um, I think that's the exact uh, date span, I'd have to look, I should know it, but they actually lost 66 games in a row. So. This has been a tough place to win for any coach. Um, again, Coach Arenas, the new uh, the, the head coach here, uh, called me up, got me out of retirement last year to come join him. So I did come back. Um, here I'm the offensive coordinator. Uh, Position-wise, I coach quarterbacks on offense and the secondary on defense. And we just set out last year to kind of change, change the culture, get a buy-in, get kids doing what they're supposed to do in the classroom. Again, this this area. It's, you know, a lot of great kids here. They get a bad rap from where they come from, but there's also a lot of distractions that kids in other areas don't encounter. Um, last year before our first game, like literally 100 yards from our practice, we had a, uh, a drug-related shooting, uh, multiple gunshots, and the suspects went right past us <laughs> as they were leaving. Um, just last week at practice, we had probably 30 people out across at that same apartment complex, and a large fight broken out, uh, police came there and there was a lot of uh, turmoil going on. So that's the environment these kids deal with. And, and you go to pretty much any other high school in the country, you don't have shootings literally yards from your practice, you know, so. But the kids here, they do a great job, they work hard, and we do not get the athletic talent we, uh, that other high schools get. But um, we have kids that will work hard for us and we look to get the most out of that talent and uh, get whatever success we can. And last year, our record on the field was not exceptional. We went two and eight, but uh, finished very strong, averaged over 300 yards rushing in our double wing offense the last five games of the season. Um, had a chance actually to have a winning record in region play, and we uh, let a game, our last game, get away from us. But, uh, you know, something to build on this year, we, had gone down to 4A, went to a new region. We actually, with the kids we had coming back, thought we had a very good chance to make a run at even competing for that region title and have a winning season, which would have been the fifth. Unfortunately, COVID screwed all that up, so we're stuck with a five-game season. And actually, it turned out pretty favorable. We're playing other schools in our district because our district and one other got pushed back uh, behind the rest of the state in terms of when they could start. So we're playing schools in district and on our schedule, again, it's only five games and we're playing 5A and 6A schools. There's one other 4A school in the, uh, between the two districts that we're going to play also, but the rest are 5A or 6A. 
but we have a chance to compete and quite honestly my honest opinion we should if we take care of business go four and one uh, to get that fifth team south which uh, put a hurting on us last year uh, we would really have to play exceptional football and they would have to make some mistakes but it's possible that's why you play the game so there's some optimism there even though it's a short season uh, we got a couple of transfers in that actually are looking very good and for the first time in 32 years of coaching uh, I'm going to be on a varsity staff that actually starts a freshman and we've had good freshmen at Westview where I coached before but we had enough talent there we never had to give a thought about bringing them up to varsity so they always played with other freshmen or, you know that first year and then if they were good they could come up as sophomores here it's a combination of both the kid is a, a very special talent that uh, we don't get here very much and also due to numbers it's uh, you know, we have spots and we're thin at some places. So he's probably going to come up and he'll either start at free safety or at one of the running back positions. So excited about that. But um, it's basically a rundown. Uh, right now, obviously, I'm in our weight room. And it actually is a, uh, a very, very good weight room for um, compared to even a couple of the bigger schools that I've been at. I'm trying to flip this around, whatever. But you can see it's got. Um, Two rows of squat racks, and in football, the core lifts, squat, deadlift, bench. You know, bench is definitely third there. It's more, I don't know. I don't think, I think bench is overrated as a lift, but, you know, mostly uh, squat, deadlift, um, power clean. Those are the lifts that uh, we strive for for football purposes. So, really good facilities. Uh, it's fairly new, it was remodeled in terms of equipment. Uh, so, really a nice workout room and I'm actually going to get a quick workout in before practice and then we'll be on the field. Uh, today we're going to be just in helmets, uh, focusing on special teams, so that will be the focus. We may get some drills in, but it will probably be just special teams. And um, I do have some clips from our practice Thursday where we uh, were in shoulder pads, and, or shoulder pads for the first time, shells, which is basically half pads. And we did do some team stuff there. So I'll have a few clips of uh, our, our core plays in the double wing offense, which are power. And then we also run some sweep, which is wing T concepts. I, I coached mostly in wing T, my coaching career. And double wing, we adapted because it gives us an identity here and fits the style of kids. And it's an equalizer. You do not need phenomenal athletes all over the field to, run, to win in a double wing offense. So that's what we're running. Our kids like it, they bought into it, and we think we're going to uh, run the ball down people's throats this year, just to be honest. So you'll, you'll see how that works, and uh, hopefully this will be interesting, and I'll do this a few times throughout the season. So I'm going to get my workout in, and we'll be back. So 2020 COVID protocol, this is what we have to do. This is Coach Arenas, the head coach here. One of the bright young coaches in the Valley. Falcon Fry wings up. Best Hispanic coach in the state under 510. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Go Falcons. Double wing football, baby. Power football. Let's get it done. So, COVID 19. Oh, shit. So, the kids, as they come in, I'll pretend I'm one of the kids. And this is what they go through. So, we go uh, Mr. Andy Delgado. Cough? No. Sore throat? No. Shortness of breath? No. Contact with COVID 19? No. And then we do this. You're good, sir. 96-4. I'm still healthy. All right, so right now today's practice is going to be pretty much focused on special teams. I think I mentioned that. Maybe not, but it is. Uh, we'll do some passing, some skellies, which is just uh, passing, no pads, and um, some individual drills as well, but pretty much special teams focused today. Uh, we do work special teams every day, but this is early end of first week of fall camp. So we like to have a dedicated special teams practice because that's the part of the game that is often ignored and quite honestly, it is the most important part of the game. So working a kickoff cover right now. And key points here, coaching points, is we've got our two returns back here. But uh, work uh, outside in, squeezing the outside shoulder with the returner keeping the lanes condensed. So here we go, see how they do. The kicker's pretty good too. Squeeze it, squeeze! All right, 
to kick off return now. Yeah, I do in middle return. Sorry for the whistle. Get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. I'm going to make a wedge here across, get up in it. So our backup QB, the sophomore, is not here on Saturday practice. So normally our EDDs. Good, Bryce. Okay, shuffle now. Normally our EDDs will no. include a rowing session from different positions to get prepared and then we go through this. This is our footwork sequence. Uh, first we're just drops, uh, drop steps. This is a shuffle. This works on the front foot plant. Okay, now do uh, do 58, or I'm sorry, 208, 209 footwork, but start on the line facing me. Facing me, bro. 209? So 209. Just work the footwork. No! Sir, where'd he go? Drop, get flat, shoulder square downhill, good. These drills, uh, the staple of our passing offense is play action, so we work a lot of footwork on the play action. Thanks for changing the lines. No! 208, 208, 208. No! Sir, where'd he go? Downhill, good. Okay, work toss drill, uh, toss drill down to the hash. Huh? Toss, yeah. Invert your inside foot. Ready? Let's go. Let's go. So the, this core of the offense is the power play, which go. we call 64-65 toss. Go. It is a quick pitch. If you've seen double go. wing, you know everything is compressed, which we'll see go. later in our team uh, session. Go. So the key here is this is our core play. We work every day on the foot quarterback's Go. footwork on the pitch because he has to get Go. completely around the midline, Go. get his uh, rear foot in Go. a three or nine o'clock position in relation to his front foot, and make a soft toss as he's doing this, then get his ass uh, downfield and up through the hole to take the uh, corner. That's his blocking Go. responsibility. Or first man outside to appear on the defense. So because of that, we stress this drill work it every single day to make sure that their footwork is good and they're in a good position. So they get too deep, screws up the timing of the play. He disappears, run skellies basically. So run skellies, we're just running backfield action with the different plays. This is the inside trap. That's a great job, Riley, but two things. Take sweep, quarterback now, boots out. Your first out. step was okay. Time is just No, that's not even that bad. So we'll do I this mean, period um, five minutes a day, too, to get the backfield timing down and to make sure everyone's steps are the same. And you see Coach Arenas, who is the head coach, as new, mentioned, new also coaches running back. backs. Be low. 50. Down. Say, where'd he go? Hey, Chavo. Good. So that's a good bend. Pullback takes just a little drop step to open space. Quarterback gets off what we call the midline. And then he bends back underneath the guard. He will be trapping from the left side of the line. Good. Corner bails. There you go. Good. Lead him good. Bryce, get the corner read. Corner crash. Lead him though. Let's go. Footwork, Bryce. Get across. Hey, Bax, I want you to score. I need you to score. Let's go. Move on. Move on. Go. Get in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. That's all shit. <laughs> That's almost good. Individual DB warm up. Jump up. Let's go, Leon. Come on. Be ready. Next guy, be ready. Go. Balls of your feet, balance, move your hands. Charming. Go! <laughs> it's irritating. Go! Pump the arms tight. Good, 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 good. Good job, Angel. Let's go. Go! Okay, normally when I bring them back here, I give them a ball call. I'm not going to do it this time. Go! Ball! And normally I throw to them. Go! Ball! Go! It's just one of the warm-up drills we do before every practice. Ball! Cheater! And they cheat. Go! Ball! Roll that hip. Exaggerate the hip. Go! Exaggerate the hip. Ball! Good. Ready, go! 
Find the sky, good. So here we're working, uh, just tackling angle techniques, staying on inside hip. Come on, Andy, be ready. Ready, go! Find the sky, get those eyes through the top of your face mask. Ready, go! Boom, good. Ready, go! Good, Brycey. Ready, go! Good, good follow through, Kendra. Okay, other way. Ready, go! Explode, good. Ready, go! Good. Ready, go! Rip through, good. Ready, go! Good. Okay, now straight down the line, alligator. Oh, I'm sorry, you haven't done yet. Ready, go! So this again is just to get us in position on the inside hip so we take away the cutback. Alligator roll. Ready, go! Take away the cutback and also make sure we are in a safe tackling position. This is an alligator roll drill. This is a Pete Carroll thing. Ready, go! Here we want to just work on getting behind. Hey, Andy, grab, hug, and roll. Ready, go. Okay, you, you watched Andy, Angel. Bryce, do it correctly. Ready, go. Grab, roll, good. All right, so that's a little taste of a typical high school practice. And, you know, again, today, uh, Saturday practice, we, we've got, and we have small numbers anyway, and again, you know, the school, we're a 4A school in an area that uh, does not have, as I mentioned, a strong uh, football culture. But uh, we've got 34 kids rostered, ended up with um, 26 at practice today on a Saturday. Um, you know, the, the other part about kids in our area, we knew, uh, I think six of them weren't going to be there because they have jobs to help out their families. It is what it is. It's a challenging place to coach and it, a challenging place for a kid. Um, but you know, we do the best and, and we think we're going to have a good season and more important than that, uh, continue to build men. So hopefully you uh, enjoyed this glimpse and again went through uh, after the introduction our weight room and uh, basically the, the COVID check-in we have to do. Uh, some special teams, individual drills on offense and uh, defense and uh, passing period. In the team period you saw when we worked on the run game, um, that was recorded, uh, as I mentioned, Thursday when we were in pads. Uh, we're just in helmets today to uh, give the kids, the kids were a little bit uh, beat up after the, you know, the end of the week of practice and, and having uh, uh, three practices in shells or half pads. So just a chance to rest and, and work more on some technique, work on some timing in the passing game. So yeah, I'll do a few more of these throughout the season um, and do one especially on game day and what goes on there. And uh, I'm not obviously going to be filming clips of the game while I'm coaching, but uh, uh, we'll take, I'll download some from uh, Huddle after the game and intersperse those in with, uh, with that uh, piece to to give you a little bit of the pre-game and also the game day uh, experience as well. So hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks as always for watching and uh, we will talk to you later. Anthony with Bleacher Bums Gaming. Hope you all have a great weekend and we'll see you.